Hey, this is Tyler with Diesel Geek, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the installation and assembly of the Sigma 6 six speed short shift kit. This current generation utilizes a cast steel front to back section and retains the built aluminum bell crank and front to back cable end. In addition to those two main components, we have our hardware, which is comprised of the 5 millimeter alignment pin the eight millimeter top lock nut for securing the front to back, the high performance pivot pin bushings, two shiny metal clips, our perfect pivot bushing pair for the side to side cable end, our Sigma slider, the four Allen screws for snugging the cable end on the cable, and then three bell crank pins. We have the slider pin, the cable end pin, and finally the pivot pin. Before we get going on the install here, we're going to show you how to remove the stock shifter from your transmission. And then Jim is going to show us how to assemble our bell crank, as well as modify our cable end to accept our high performance pivot pin bushings. After that's complete, we'll go ahead and install the shifter on the car and perform an alignment. I'm gonna show you how to remove the stock shifter from your six speed MQ350 transmission. The first step here is to remove or get this bell crank to slide towards the mount here. And so you're not gonna have the access that I do because there's a car in the way, but you so you probably have to do this with a pick. But basically the first step is you wanna spread this clip, um, spread, spread both sides of this C clip so that it lifts up like that. And you can, you can set that aside. From there, um, if you're installing a short shifter, you're gonna need to use this cable end uh, to install our perfect pivot bushings in it. And so what you wanna do is take a screwdriver and just slip it between the plastic bell crank and the cable end itself, and then just give it a little bit of a twist, and that'll force the cable end off of this little bump right here. So you just put the screwdriver in here, give it a twist, and it'll slide it off the bump there. And now that bell crank is, is, is more or less liberated. You can just wiggle it and work it towards the transmission mount and slide this cable end off the rest of the way. And then because of the clearance here, you're actually gonna have to click the trans into gear so that you can bring this bell crank all the way down like this. And then it'll just barely snake through there. So now that bell crank's out of the way, and then you'll need to remove this cable end from the cable and you'll just take this ring and you'll pull it forward and then give it a twist uh, counterclockwise like that, that way, and it'll stay sprung like this and you can slide this off. Next, we'll do the same thing to the front to back cable. And then finally, we can remove the flange nut up top. Um, and then go ahead and return this to neutral here so that it moves up and down. Um, we've had this shifter off a number of times, so it'll just lift off of there. A lot of times though, they'll stick and in the case that they happen to be sticking, I'll simulate that by threading that on by hand. But in the case that they're sticking, you can just kind of use the counterweight as a slide hammer on the selector shaft. And with that, that nut won't be there obviously, but you just kind of go like that and it'll, it'll work its way off of there. There you have it, removal of the stock shifter. Hey, this is Jim with Diesel Geek, and today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of assembling your side-to-side -side bracket for the Sigma shifter. This is the Sigma side-to-side -side bracket, and um, it is the same for 5-speed and 6-speed. So what you need to do is, when you assemble this, you need to assemble it um, with the orientation the same. Like, this is a slider. This is a Mark IV 5-speed um, bracket right here. This is the stock one, and this is the slider right here. And so you want to make sure and take the pin that is the slider pin, which is the, the larger diameter pin. And, you, you know, if you, if you put it in here, you can see that it fits here, whereas the slider wouldn't fit on there because that's too small. But anyway, you take the slider pin and you put it in this hole so it matches what you have. And so then, you know, the cable end pin would go in the other hole. So um, the 5-speed Mark IV and the, six, the Sigma 6 use the same side-to-side -side bracket now. Um, the holes are exactly the same, so you just need to make sure and make them match. And if you make them match, everything will be fine. And that's it. 
Hey, this is Jim with Diesel Geek, and today I'm going to show you how to convert your stock square headed cable end over to a high performance cable end to be used with the Diesel Geek Sigma shifter. The first thing that you need to do is you need to start with a cable end that is square headed. Um, this, this is a square headed cable end. Um, it has usually a hole, a cylindrical hole in it for to go onto a pin. Um, this is the old, um, the oldest uh, round headed cable end that was used in, up until uh, early 2001, it's completely rounded. So you, you can't use one of these for our inserts right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, well, before I go there, I'm gonna say um, that the, the cable end that you can use is not just a side to side cable end. You can use a front to back cable end from 2001 on also. Um, just gotta make sure that it has the square head. So it can have a 10 millimeter pin like this one, uh, you know, the bushing for a 10 millimeter pin, or it can be the eight millimeter bushing like this one from the side to side, um, everything up to 2006 or 2007. So um, the other, you know, the other place where you can find the square headed cable end is the side to side brackets from 2008 uh, to 2020, really, or 2021. Um, these work fine. Uh, you just have to get them off the pins. What we're going to do here is we're going to take one of these um, side to side cable end from, you know, early 2000s, and we're going to gut it. To do that, we're going to stick our um, our needle nose pliers in in the hole here, and we're going to grab onto the hard plastic insert, and we're going to separate. It. We're going to twist and separate it from the rubber. So once we've done that, we have just rubber left. So once the, the hard plastic's out, you're gonna go in from the bottom and you're gonna slip, you're gonna slip the pliers in between the rubber and the hard plastic shell. And then you're just gonna grab the rubber. And sometimes the spring flies off. And you're just gonna grab the rubber um, and just twist, twist, twist until it pops out. And so once it pops out, you have a nice shell ready for the inserts. So I'm gonna go grab, actually, I'm not gonna go grab that ring. I'm just gonna take it off of here. And uh, if that happens, all you have to do is just put the spring back on like that. And then there's a bump right here that you need to line this notch up with and just slip it on the three fingers like so until it goes on. So that's fixed and ready to go. So once you've done that and you've freed up the ring, um, first, let me say about the ring. The ring, th this plastic is glass reinforced plastic. It's very, very tough. And on the side to side, it is under almost no load whatsoever. The front to back, you know, you're banging into gears back and forth and, and it's under load. And that's why we use an aluminum cable end. But for the side to side, they're all under almost no load, maybe two or three pounds of load at the most. So it really doesn't need to be some super heavy duty billet aluminum cable end for the side to side. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the inserts and this is Delrin, and we're gonna start it in the inner ring. And you can see that there's an inner ring. There's two little half circles here, and the cable end is going to key onto that. I mean, the, the bushing is gonna key onto that. And so you just get it lined up, and then once they're lined up, you can just push it on. And now you've converted the cable end over to high performance. So once you've done that, if you have a stock type shifter, you can do that and it goes on just fine. And if you have the Sigma shifter, it goes on the same sort of pin, just fine. And um, you're ready for installing into the car. And that's it. All right, so now that we've got our perfect pivot inserts in our side-to-side -side cable end, and we have our bell crank assembled in the correct orientation, we can go ahead and start working on the installation of the shifter. The first step is to just get these uh, cable end bolts started. Um, don't, don't tighten them, just get them started a couple turns. It's a lot easier to do it out of the car than in the engine bay. From there, we'll take our front to back assembly and we'll bring it out to the car. And the first thing we want to do is slip it onto the front to back cable and just make sure that it moves nice and smoothly like this. This one's cooperating, but uh, particularly on the newer MQB cars, some of the cables are a little bit oversized. And so if it's sticking on this cable and not sliding smoothly, um, that'll inhibit your adjustment. And so what you want to do to get out ahead of that is you just take your, your uh, assembly and insert a number two Phillips down this hole and you can just kind of give it a little bit of a spread. It doesn't take a lot, um, just flex it open a couple times and uh, that'll allow it to slide on that cable. So once you've got that cable end sliding on the cable nicely, what you want to do, what you need to do is locate the double tooth of the spline. Um, we've highlighted this in red, but it's just two conjoined teeth and it pretty much lines up directly at the engine when the transmission's in neutral, and you'll know the transmission's in neutral because the selector shaft will just move freely up and down like that. Um, so you just locate that double tooth, and then you're gonna wanna line it up with the double keyway in the front to back, which has this little divot here, um, and it's the divot that faces the cable end side of the front to back bracket. 
And so you can just drop that on. Oh, another thing um, is uh, sometimes this little boot here will be covering some of the threads. And if you run into that, um, like the cable end doesn't want to go on there far enough, you can just take that boot. And this one's actually already forced all the way back. You can just force it back to the firewall and just make sure that all the threads of that cable are exposed. So anyway, now that that's on there, we'll just take our eight millimeter lock nut and just thread it on there. And we'll just go ahead and tighten it. And it'll click into gear as you start to rotate, and that's fine. And just go ahead and, and, and get it good and tight, but don't go nuts. Um, we've had some customers in the past that have broken this stud there, and that is really, really inconvenient, and so you don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and tighten it, but don't go nuts. Uh, from there, what we'll do is we'll take our bell crank, and we'll take one of our pivot bushings and slide it onto the pin. We're going to take the slider here and put it on the slider pin. And then because of the clearance, we have to roll this guy way back and come in at an angle. And once we've kind of made that corner, then we can take our other bushing here, slide into the tube. And so we can bring all this together and then bring that slider down into the channel. And then we'll bring our front to back, back into neutral, so they can move up and down. And you want to check before you go any further that this just moves nice and smoothly here. Um, you can see we push down and it just springs right back up. What happens, particularly on the newer cars that use a plastic bell crank here and ones that live in uh, salty environments, um, is that corrosion will develop in this tube. And if corro uh, well, if you, if, if you have corrosion in that tube, if you have this, this sticking selector shaft like that, what you need to do is take the bell crank and the bushings back out and you'll need to get in there with a wire brush like this. A 410 shotgun brush works pretty well. It's a 12 millimeter tube, um, but just go ahead and scrub it back and forth and work all that white uh, crumbly corrosion out of there. And once you've done that, uh, the bushings will drop back in and it'll look, it'll, it'll respond just like this. Once you've ensured that that bell crank moves nice and smoothly, just go ahead and back it back out like that. And we'll take our cable end, open it back up if you need to, and just slip it onto the side to side cable. And you kind of have to simultaneously slide the bell crank into the tube and the slider into the channel and the cable onto the cable end pin all together to prevent binding. And so once that's done, you can just drop your shiny metal clips on to your pivot pin and cable end pins like that. And um, at this point, this shifter is installed. Uh, we just need to perform an alignment. Um, so to perform the alignment, what we'll do is we'll locate this plastic L lever here. And you push in a little bit and it'll stop. And then you push down here. And when it reaches the home position, that pin will drop in there a little bit farther and um, it'll turn up. And when, when it's in the happy spot, then it won't, the selector shaft won't really want to rotate and it won't really move up and down. Um, and that can be a little bit elusive, so I'll show you again. But basically, you push in on the pin, you're kind of feeling with the pin while you're pushing down with the selector shaft. And when it all lines up, then the pin will drop in further and it'll turn up. Um, now on the oldest uh, six-speed cars from the Mark IV and the Mark I TT, uh, this pin wasn't an L handle, it was just like a nail head, um, but it works exactly the same way. It, you know, you push in a little bit and you know, won't feel anything and then you just kind of feel with the pin while you're pushing down here and when it, when it gets into the home position, it'll just drop in a little bit farther. But anyway, our selector shaft now is locked, our cable ends are open, and so at this point, we're gonna go inside the car and we're going to lock the stick in the home position using the five millimeter alignment pin. So the MQ350, AKA the six speed, and the MQ250, AKA the Mark V five, five speed and uh, 1.4 uh, six speed transmission, um, they had one of a few different cabin shifters assemblies installed in them. Um, this is a Mark IV uh, shifter box and it's basically the same as a Mark V shifter box. Um, it's got a metal plate up here. Um, but uh, anyway, the the specifics of the box don't really matter. Um, rather, what I want to show is that it's all the same pin and it's all the same idea. Um, basically, what you do is you, uh, you're, you're going through the upper loop with the pin, and then you just navigate the stick such that the pin aligns with that lower loop. And sometimes, particularly on the cars that have this, this uh, injection molded plastic socket here, it can be a little bit difficult to get started. But, uh, but yeah, you just kind of give it a wiggle and a twist and it'll, it'll go ahead and find its home. Um, specifically on the MQB cars, so that's the Mark 7, Mark 8, and newer cars, um, <clears throat> the whole cabin shifter assembly 
is, is plastic and the upper loop has a step in it and uh, it's caused some, some confusion or consternation um, with some customers that are trying to perform alignments. And because of that step, it can be helpful to guide the pin in kind of at an angle and then pass it through. And then once you align the stick appropriately, it'll drop on into the box. Now, um, we have had a, a couple folks that have mentioned that they thought the pin was too big. Um, that's not actually the case. Um, it's just that this injection molded socket here has three ribs, or excuse me, four ribs when they're new. And um, that, can, that can make it feel like the pin doesn't want to drop in. And so sometimes it'll take some force and some twisting to get it to drop. But um, if, you, if you get it all lined up right, it will just go ahead and drop right in there. And so at this point, we have our cabin shifter locked and we have our selector shaft on our transmission locked. And so we'll go back out to the engine compartment. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push down on the nut and there's not a lot of play, but there's a bit. So just push down on the nut and then take your side to side cable and just give it a wiggle and, get, and go ahead and force it back towards the firewall. And then you'll let go. You don't, you don't hold it because you don't want this, this cable loaded up under tension or under compression, but you just want it back as far as it'll go. And then you just give that ring a, a turn and the spring will do the rest. And that'll lock that side to side cable in position. And this is the most critical um, of the two adjustments right there. Um, so at this point, We'll grab our four millimeter Allen and we're just going to start spinning these guys down by hand. You'll, you'll probably want to use an extension because you won't be able to get this close. Um, but just spin them down by hand until they bottom out and just kind of go in a crisscross pattern. And once all four of them are bottomed out, then you can just go ahead and start snugging them. And they'll, they'll let you know when they're tight. They'll, they'll just get firm there and just hit all four of them. And then just go back one more time and make sure that they're all tight. And once they're all tight, uh, you're, you're, you're pretty much done. We'll just go ahead and unlock our selector shaft, which will allow this to move again. And then we'll go into the cabin and we'll pull our five millimeter pin out. And then we're just gonna make sure that we've got all our gears. So we'll go over to the wall and get first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and we'll push down, and we'll check reverse. All right, so it looks like we have a little bit of a malfunction here. So the first step here is we're just gonna go ahead and repin everything. We'll lock our selector shaft. And yeah, it looks like looks like that's a problem with the side to side adjustment because when I when I push down, this didn't really want to line up. So we'll just open that cable end again, give it a jiggle. Now it's probably just a little bit too aggressive with my pull back. There's actually a little bit of kind of slot baked into this factory box. So we'll just give this a jiggle. Let's try to loosen this guy, let it just float freely. Just check it again. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and down into reverse. And so at this point, if you've got all your gears and uh, you can engage them all nice and smoothly, then, then you're done. If, uh, if you're having some difficulty, like I just did, go ahead and, and just re go back and redo that adjustment and or uh, proceed to the uh, fine tuning um, if that's still not working for you. Anyway, that's about it. Okay, so uh, this is the fine tuning video. I'm, I'm not entirely happy with that shifter adjustment. First, second, and reverse all kind of feel mm, less than awesome. Um, so uh, I'm gonna show you another take on the shifter alignment and we're gonna, we're gonna start with an elevator test. And so you're either gonna need a helper um, or you need to put your phone in your engine compartment and take a video. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from neutral, we're gonna go just to the left over to the wall, and then we're gonna go into first. And this, this trans really doesn't even wanna go. But if I kind of force it, you can see that it dropped down. So over to, to, over to the wall and then push it into first. And you can see that bell crank kicks forward and the front to back bracket kicks down. Um, 
And so what that tells me is that what that tells me is that the effective length of this cable is just a little bit too short. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a Sharpie and we're just going to put a little mark. We're just going to paint those threads there so we can kind of see where we're starting. There's, there's three little threads that are painted right there. And what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to open this cable end again and we're going to bring we're going to bring that cable out like two threads. Um, they're not they're not actually threads, but they're they look like threads. So we're just going to bring that out about two or three threads, and then we're going to go ahead and repeat. Um, so we're going to go over to the wall and over into first, and still it's it's better, but it's still just dropping down just a little bit. So. We're going to go into the engine compartment again, and we're going to open this cable, and we're going to just go like one more thread there. All right. And we'll just go back and check again. Obviously, if you have a helper, then you can have your helper be in the car and push over to the wall and then go into first. And that was nice and smooth. It's actually, that bell crank is kicking up a little bit now. Um, it's, it really is a product of the kind of baked-in slop to these MQB boxes. In particular, the plastic boxes are, are not great, but uh, that's about as good as it's going to get with the stock cabin linkage. Um, but at this point, we've got all of our gears that we can get to smoothly and easily. Now, if, if you still are, if you've got that one-two elevator test dialed, uh, so that the front to back bracket isn't jumping down when you go into first or second from the wall position, then, uh, and you're still having difficulty getting some of your gears, namely reverse and or fifth or sixth, then odds are you have slop in the linkage. Um, if you have a Sigma shifter, you're hundred percent out in the engine compartment. So odds are your slop is in the cabin, uh, likely from the forward pivot or uh, first gear getter area. And so that's a, that's a exercise in, in diagnosing that slop and then, you know, finding the correct parts to replace it, mostly from our bushings catalog. Um, but if you have a pretty low mileage car um, and you're just having a little bit of, of difficulty uh, getting your gears after a fresh statement install, um, and you've done the adjustment a couple times and you're not quite getting there, then this is the procedure for you. So uh, thanks a lot.